Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about HR8 and how it has raised its ugly little head again. If you're not familiar with what HR8 is, that's House Resolution 8. It is a bill that if passed into law would make universal background checks the law of the land. There'd be no more private sales. Now, they love to say, this will close the gun show loophole. That's not what this really does. What they're really doing is ending private sales. They're telling private individuals that you can't trade property with another legal law-abiding private individual without the government having their nose in it so that they could know where every single gun is and who has it. That's the goal of this bill. And apparently it's been getting some lip service lately. Old uh, Dickie Durbin has been saying, we've got the votes to pass this bill. We're going to get this bill passed. We could pass it today, I heard him say on the news the other day. Which is funny, considering, as far as I know, no Republicans have signed on to it at all in the Senate. And there's at least two or three Democrats that have said that they are not on board. So when they can't even get their other stuff passed that isn't really that controversial like infrastructure, they had, look how much trouble they had with that. He thinks they're just going to shove this through for some reason. I think old Dickie Durbin is either, uh, which he probably does, but uh, I think he's either doing that or he's taking a page from Alec Baldwin's book and saying, hey, when you don't like reality, make up your own. Because I don't believe for a second he's got the votes for this. In fact, if he had the votes for this, why has he uh, scheduled a, a, a PR event in Chicago with the committee he chairs to try to rile people up about gun violence? That's not something you do after you already have the votes. That's things you do to try to get the votes. He doesn't sound like a man who really has the votes to me. In fact, when I go on and I check on, on GovTrack.com or GovTrack.org, I believe it is, uh, and you look up the bill, the bill has been sitting in the exact same spot for eight months almost nine months now, hasn't moved, has no uh, signs of moving. It is rated at having a 3% chance of passing, which was updated three days ago. So not much chance this bill's going to pass. Dick Durbin is blowing smoke out of his ass. And one of the only things I can uh, figure out he's doing is he's trying to rile people up. He's trying to get us riled up because he knows that as soon as they say something like that, there's going to be talking heads on YouTube that immediately get on and start beating the war drums and getting people riled up and then giving them discount codes or telling them to shop at their Amazon shop. So he knows that he can say something like this and it'll rile people up. And then occasionally the, the, you know, the, the nuttiest in the bunch will do something stupid and they can point and go, aha, there's why we need universal background checks. But as far as this bill actually passing, I don't see much chance of it. I don't see uh, any reason to get really upset because, like I said, 3% chance of passing. And you've seen how much trouble they're having passing other things. You really think they're going to be able to just get this through? You think the Democrats and the Republicans just finally said, let's work together on gun violence and let's pass this and get the loophole pack closed. It's not even a loophole. Like I said, it's them taking away the right for private individuals to trade private property without the government's nose in it. Which is why I kind of almost hope it passes. Uh, I'm not saying I really hope it. You know, it's just that little evil part of the back of your brain, your little reptile brain, where I'm like, I hope they fucking pass it. And it's not because I already live under it in Washington. We already have universal background checks. So it's not like, a fuck, if I got to deal with it, you got to deal with it. It's not spite. Spite's not the only emotion I have. Uh... It's also because I think it could be a, the, the last domino set in the line. You know what I mean? Because it's such an egregious law, taking away the rights of people. It's basically creating a registry so they'll know where every gun is at all times because every transfer will need a back paperwork. Uh, it's taking away the rights of individuals to trade property inside their state lines. The only way the government gets away with their uh, interstate laws is because of interstate commerce laws that somehow give the government right to... Uh, uh, govern things that travel from one state to another, and they've over abused that for years. They've just abused that to death. They've overreached on that for so long that eventually that's going to snap back, I have a feeling, especially with the Supreme Court we have now. But I just don't think they could get away with universal background checks nationwide. Now, on state levels, it's a little harder to overturn it because uh, it's a state law and they're treated differently, blah, blah, blah. But once it was a federal law, I think there would be more fighting against it and I think it would get through courts faster 
And once it's declared unconstitutional on a national level, the state laws fall. So I almost wish it would pass just so we could, like I said, knock down that first domino. But it isn't going to pass. I would be willing to bet on it. Anybody wants to take a $10 bet, I'll bet you 10 bucks on it. Uh, but Dick Durbin, like I said, full of shit. He's not acting like someone who has the votes. He's trying to create his own reality. I think he put it on his vision board, gun control. And then he's like, I'm going to have gun control. You know, he's like, he's in, it's like the, the sisterhood of the traveling pants, except it's with old alcoholic senators. Uh, I guess they have pants, but old alcoholic senator pants, I guess. Sisterhood of the old alcoholic senator pants. I know this isn't winning material for people. I'm making this up as a freaking go. I don't have writers, you know. So uh, this is what's off the top of my head. But uh, I wouldn't worry about HR8. People have been asking me about it. it it's got not very likely to pass, period. Like I say, it's been languishing for eight or nine months. No one has signed on to it. When he said, I have even had Republicans sign on to this, when he was pushed, it came out, it was just, well, three Republicans in uh, the House signed on to it. And when asked, well, how many in the uh, Senate do you know that would vote for it? He completely changed the subject and refused to answer the question because he knows there's none. He knows he doesn't even have all the Democrats. So as far as H.R. 8, pay attention, but don't panic because I don't think there's any chance of it passing. And in some sort of crazy, bizarro world, if it actually happens, like I said, Let's try to look at it as an opportunity to take back some of the rights they've always taken, you know, because the perfect time to do that when they've taken a little bit too much is once they reach that last time and they reach just a little too far, that's the time to smack their hands. That's when people get on your side. All right, everybody, I want to move on here and go to gun talk. And I want to answer a question that came from a viewer. And that viewer asked me, does Colt make a good gun? Are Colts still worth buying? Where have they gone downhill? Well, I want to detach myself here for a second because I'm a big Colt fan and I think everybody knows that. I love them. 1911, single action armies, pythons, love Colt. But Colt, you know, they started off great. They were innovative. They were master craftsmen. They produced some of the finest firearms in the world. And then they kind of rested on their laurels for a long time. Colt really declined in quality. If you're old enough like me to be buying guns back in the 90s, Colts were rattle traps. They weren't so great anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, those late 90 guns were getting a little loose. The machines were wearing out a Colt. They weren't investing in new machines. It was really showing. They were really losing the favor of Americans. And then they picked it up. You know, they decided, wow, we really got to invest in our line. We got to start making these things better. They started buying more modern machinery, CNC machinery, etc. They started producing better quality guns again. Late 1990s and the 2000s, the guns started going back up in quality. In fact, they got very good very fast. And yes, they're great guns. Uh, but even though they managed to bring their quality back up, they never really brought back, you know, that ability to innovate. I mean, look at most of their stuff. It's remakes of their old stuff. And even though I think a lot of the new stuff is every bit as good as their old stuff, if not better in some ways, it's still old stuff. It's stuff that old guys like me like. And there's some younger people that like them too, but it's mostly old guys like me. They've never exactly been able to put their finger on the pulse of America. You know, they're better off when it's old white guys who hunt or own a farm or whatever buying guns or soldiers. Those are the markets they've been good with. They haven't been good with the everyday uh, Jack and Jill who just wants a gun for carry or for the range or home defense. They just, that's never been their market. And it showed they didn't innovate very quickly. Uh, they started just recently in the last couple of years putting things like Novak sights on their guns, on their 1911s, you know, stuff that's been commonplace for 10 years on every other gun. Uh, they just started doing those updates on their guns, but it's a little too little, a little too late because obviously, you know, they went under pretty much. They got bought out by CZ. So uh, now I have a lot of hope for Colt because I think CZ's done a wonderful job with every other uh, brand they bought, Dan Wesson especially. And since they discontinued the Dan Wesson Revolver, I'm thinking Colt's gonna kind of fill the revolver market there. They're gonna really concentrate on Colt revolvers. And I'm sure they'll still do Colt 1911s too, alongside the Dan Wesson line. But right now, I think Colt is going to be 
even better with CZ owning them. I know it's a shame that it's an overseas company that owns them now, but I'd rather see an overseas company take ownership and then still produce great guns here in America than I would just see them dwindle away and disappear. So to answer the question in a shorter manner, because the long answer is what I just said, the short answer is, yes, Colt guns have always been good, but there were times when they weren't as good as they should be. But nowadays, they're good again. You buy a Colt, a Python, single action army, they're good guns. Uh, but not the most innovative things, like I said. And now with CZ taking them over, I think they're going to be better than ever. All right, everybody, before I go, I want to remind everyone that tonight is actually the last night to go over and donate for tomorrow's drawing of the Glock for the Fur Friends Animal Rescue Glock Giveaway Fundraiser. If you want to go over and donate, go over and donate at tympistolproject.com. There's a link in the upper corner of this video. For every $10 you donate before midnight tonight, you'll be entered into the drawing tomorrow for the C, or excuse me, for the Glock G17 Gen 3. I'm giving away one every Friday. So once midnight tonight hits, We'll be starting off the uh, entries for next week's giveaway, and it'll be like that till the end of the year. So if you haven't given yet and you want to be in the drawing for tomorrow, donate by midnight tonight. And to anyone who does go over and donate, good luck. I wish you could all win, but it's only going to be one of you. So tune in tomorrow for the live chat to find out who it was. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone, always carry and stay safe until I see you again. Mm -hmm.